Okay, we're going to talk today about understanding welder continuity. A lot of times there's some confusion in regards to welder continuity. My name is Gary A. Pace. I'm a PE CWI. If you get a chance, check out website train-eng.com. Got some affordable options there in regards to CWI training online, both for Part A and Part B. We're trying to put together an AWS D1.1 uh, course for Part C. But anyways, give it a give it a look. Take a take a test drive over there. Anyways, let's dive into this. Okay, so we're going to touch base on welder continuity. We're going to talk about AWS D1.1 structural welding code 4.2.3 period of effectiveness. We're also going to cover the sister paragraphs in ASME section 9, QW322.1, expiration of qualification. Then we're going to talk about QW322.2, renewal of qualification. Then we're going to talk about some strategies I use to keep track of welder continuity and checklists and kind of my little way I operate, my SOP, standard operating procedure. Okay, keep good records. This is on welder continuity, anything to do with welding, keeping good records is a key. Um, you know, write down your welder qualification checklist, what happened when, you know, where you were at when you saw the welder welding, um, maybe a job number, um, the date and the time and what welding process they were using. Um, this is just a key to doing any of this. So um, just write it down. That's the key. So, okay, AWS D1.1, 423, period of effectiveness. Now this is where we get into a welder. You qualify a welder. Their period of effectiveness is, and I'm going to read, welder and welding operators, the welding welders or welding operators qualification as specified in this code shall be considered as remaining in effect indefinitely unless the welder is not engaged in a given process of welding for which the welder or welding operator is qualified for a period exceeding six months or there is some specific reason to question a welder or welding operator's ability. So what's that telling us? So if I give a welder, he comes in the door, he, she, they come in the door, they qualify with flux cord arc welding and gas tungsten arc welding. Well, the majority of our work in this mythical shop that we're running is flux core. And that welder goes for six months without using, or let's say a year without using gas tungsten arc welding. And then I wanna get that welder going again and use the gas tungsten arc welding process? No, that individual has not used that welding process for a period exceeding six months, those um, qualifications are null and void. So that's why we have what's called a continuity. So you try and keep track of the fact that your welder has used that welding process every six months. Number two, there is some specific reason to question a welder or welding operator's ability. Well, that doesn't fall under continuity, but it's one of those things we might as well discuss while we're here because it's in this same little paragraph. That's if a guy's eyesight's going bad, he's got whatever, for whatever reason, maybe there's a, I don't know, he's lost his edge, whatever. The welder can no longer deposit um, quality weld metal into the weld joint. You as the weld inspector or engineer have the right to say, hey, this this individual is no longer um, depositing sound weld metal into the weld joint. We can't have him doing this. We're going to pull his certs. So you got to have a specific reason. I've had individuals in the past that were um, getting older and their eyesight wasn't quite what it used to be. So you, sometimes you have to tell the foreman or the general foreman, hey, this guy's can you find him some different work to do because his eyesight is gone and he's not really able to make the quality welds that he used to in the past. So just something to think about on that one. Um, 
24.1 welder and welding operator retest requirements. So this is also out of AWS D1.1. So immediate retest and immediate retest may be made consisting of two welds of each type and position that the welder or welding operator failed. All retest requirements shall meet all the specified requirements. This isn't really where we're going, but it's in that same set of paragraphs, so I'm going to touch on it. This is just in regards to qualification of a welder. So if you have a welder come in and do a qualification test and they fail, you can give an immediate retest and say, all right, I, I've known old Fred Smith here for 152 years. This dude can weld. He just had a bad day. We'll give him two immediate tests of the same one that he failed. If he passes both of those, he's good. Um, or you could say, Fred, you haven't welded with this process for a while. You need to go and get some practice. So he goes down to the union hall or the local community college or back to his garage or something and um, does a bunch of practicing. He burns two cans of welding rod and just gets everything dialed in. And then he can come back and take a retest. So further training and practice, what does that entail? To me, that's a few hours of training and burning some rod. That's not like five minutes. So it's kind of a, I don't know, leaves a lot of wiggle room there. But if you're going to give them a test after further training and practice, just write it down. Put it in your notebook, um, your journal or somewhere that, hey, Fred Smith went and practiced for two hours with this welding process. Um, okay, so here we're, is what we were headed to. 4.24.13. Once again, this is out of AWS D1.1. Retest after lapse of qualification period of effectiveness. When a welder or welding operator's qualification period of effectiveness has lapsed, a requalification test shall be required. Welders have the option of using a test thickness of 3 eighths of an inch to qualify any production welding thickness greater than or equal to 1 eighth of an inch. So you can give them a qualification test on 3 eighths of an inch, and then that um, covers them up to, uh, it covers them for anything greater or equal to one eighth of an inch. So that covers a lot of ground. Um, exception, failure of a requalification test. No immediate retest shall be allowed after failure of a requalification test. A retest shall be allowed only after further training and practice. So if your welder comes in, if your individual has not welded with that welding process for, let's say, a year, you give them this retest, they fail the retest, then you can't just give them a, an immediate um, retest like you did before for initial qualification. You've got to give them further training and practice. So that's where you take that person over to the weld booth, wherever it is on your site, and you have them practice and practice and practice, and you know you talk with them and you know you record how many hours they practiced with that process, and you know you keep records like a grown up. So that's what these are saying. This is how AWS D1.1 handles um, requalification and or lapse of um, welder qualifications when that period of effectiveness has lapsed that six months okay so now we're going to go over to ASME section 9 um, QW 322 expiration and renewal of qualifications expiration of qualification the performance of qualification of a welder or welding operator shall be affected when one of the following occurs when he has not welded with a process during a period of six months or more, his qualification for that process shall expire unless within the six month period prior to his expiration of qualification, the welder has welded with that process using, using manual or semi-automatic welding under the supervision and control of the qualifying or participating organization or organizations as identified in QG 106.3, that will extend his qualification for an additional six months. So that's telling us that the welder can't be welding in his garage. He can't say, well, I've been TIG welding in my garage for the last six months. Well, that's not under the control and supervision of 
the organization. So that doesn't count. It's got to be something at work or it some some other mechanism there. There's some union related issues or something, and I'm there's other mechanisms, but it can't be. Hey, I was welding on the farm with this process last week. Let me show you pictures of this um, angle, this uh, great fence I built, or I was doing this with it. No, that doesn't count. Um, two, the welding operator has welded using that process using machine or automatic welding under the supervision and control of the qualifying or participating organization as identified in. C or QG 106.3 that will extend his qualifications for an additional six months. So they've got to have welded with that process in the last six months. Retests and renewal of qualification. Expiration of qualification. The performance qualification of a welder or welding operator shall be affected when one of the following occurs. When there is a specific reason to question his ability to make welds that meet the specification, the qualifications that support the welder, the welding he is doing shall be revoked. All other qualifications not questioned remain in effect. So if they're having some kind of issue with that welding process, you can pull their welding certs. Uh, this, he, he just isn't able to, you know, do TIG welding anymore, but he can still do submerged arc welding or He's not doing so good with, you know, 6G open root pipe welding, but he he's able to really do well with flux core in the flat position. So you can, it's not, you don't have to pull all of their certs. You can, you know, question some of them and say, no, nah, the open root stuff, dude just doesn't have it anymore. We're going to pull the open root and all the other certs can stay. All right, he can still run, you know, 70 24 in the flat position and really does a good job of that or is a really good submerged arc welder or you know can weld with the uh, um, machine welding or something there's a lot of different ways this can go appearance you know this is i've had to pull not pull certs but um, politely ask the the craft the general foreman and the foreman to find the welder and this, this I pulled out of a uh, Michigan Department of Transportation bridge building something. It was a pretty good example of what a weld should not look like. Um, but anyways, I've had, I had to pull a guy's certs, or not pull them, but, you know, hey, you, this guy doesn't have it anymore for this welding process. You know, getting him up there in the pipe rack and whatnot. Can we, you know, find him something that's more suitable for his skill set at this point in his career? So... Sometimes you got to make those, have those conversations with people. And, um, but anyways, it's got to be done and it's all part of the code. And that's what we're covering here. Renewal of qualifications. This we're still in ASME, um, ASME section nine. So if your welder's qualifications have expired, or let's say your he went to work, the welder went to work somewhere else for a year and a half, two years, there's a renewal you know, mechanism here. Renewal of qualifications expired under QW 322.1 may be made for any process by welding a single test coupon of either plate or pipe of any material thickness or diameter in any position and by testing that coupon as required by QW 301 and QW 302. A successful test renews the welder or welding operator's previous qualifications for that process for those materials, thicknesses, diameters, position, and other variables for which he was previously qualified. So if you have a welder that had, I don't know, 25 different welding certifications for you for, for TIG welding, stainless, aluminum, stick welding, whatever. Let's just say it was all with stick welding, shielded metal arc welding. So let's say they had some for, um, 70-24 in a flat position, 60-10, um, 70-18, some stainless, some nickel alloys, um, maybe some aluminum stick welding, whatever. So they have a whole bunch of these different qualifications in different positions, uphill, downhill, flat, everything. Five or six different types of 
F numbers, a bunch of different positions, a bunch of different thicknesses. I can give that welder one welding test. Let's say I give him a 7018 flat test with any um, test thickness. I give that welder that weld test, flat position. They get everything back if they pass that weld test. If it goes, they get everything back. They get their nickel alloys back. They get their aluminums. They get their stainless steel. They get their overhead. They get their really thick material. They get their pipe coupons. They get their 6G. They get everything back. That's one of the nuances of this code. I, got, I went the rounds with a superintendent years ago, and he thought I was um, cheating. And I'm like, dude, it says it right here. The, they have this built into the code. Because it allows, if you've got a really good welder and they leave and then come back, well, I might have 30 qualifications that I got to give that guy. And at $150 or $200 per qualification, it's going to cost me three, got three grand to bring that guy back. Whereas I can give him one test, he's back in the door for $150 bucks or whatever it is. So that's why they have this built into the code. So if you know how to do it and you know how to, kind of manipulate it so that you're giving a welder, you know, if you have it, you give them a test coupon with two or three different processes in there and they pass them, they get everything back. So you can, there's different ways that you can do this. So um, just something to think about, this renewal of qualifications if you do have to pull somebody's certs or if they come back. I, that's where I've usually used it. If a welder left the company and then came back, I could give them one test and give them everything back. Um, providing the requirements of QW304 and QW305 are satisfied, renewal of qualifications under QW322A may be done for on production work. Welders and welding operators whose qualifications have been revoked under QW322.1B above shall requalify. Requalification shall utilize a test coupon appropriate to the planned production work. The coupon shall be welded and tested as required by QW301 and 302. Successful test report, repair, uh, restores the qualifications. So it's the same thing. You know, the, you can restore their qualifications with a test coupon. Okay, so then it gets down to how do I keep track of this? I used to walk the floor a lot back when I was a, um, out, had shops to keep track of, but about every four months, I had it on my um, Outlook calendar or whatever. Hey, start doing continuities, welder continuities. And I just had a little Word document that looked like this. And I would go through it. And when I'd walk around, so this is for my mythical welder, TJ Sanchez. And I'd walk around and I'd go see TJ and I'd be like, oh, yeah, TJ was welding with TIG welding on the 8th of June. 2011 and oh I also saw him doing some flux core you know some pulse spray you know so I'd write that down uh, let's say TJ didn't have any stick qualifications and it did, he didn't have any sheet metal qualifications well I'm good I just signed this I put it in my little file folder for for that month and I'd uh, go on about my business, but I go through it for every welder on the shop floor. So it's just keeping track of paperwork. But if you're out there walking the floor, as a, you don't there, you don't have to have be able to trace it to anything. I just need to be able to, yep, I saw, you know, TJ welding with this process. I'd write it in my little notebook, saw him on this day. I always kept paper copies. I kept a notebook, but I do it about every four months. Code says six months, but I'd do four months, so then there was no chance I was going to miss it, right? So if I miss it or I'm a few days over or even a month over, I'm at five and a half months. But every four months. And the reason I got did it this way, the place I had worked years before had gotten burned because they didn't do their continuities. And then it was just big... Um, big fecal matter storm. I mean, it was a big mess. So then they just said every four months. So every four months, you just go out there and you'd walk around and write it down. Oh yeah, I saw, you know, and it's not, none of this is rocket surgery. Um, and yes, I did say rocket surgery. 
rocket science, brain surgery, rocket surgery, you know, whatever. But anyways, about every four months, you go out there and you write it down in your little book. Yep, he was doing flux core. He was doing uh, TIG. She was doing sub arc, whatever. And then you, uh, another way to do it is just throw it in an Excel spreadsheet. You know, if I had any leftovers, let's say a couple of guys were sick or there was some, let's say three or four welders hadn't used um, sub arc or flux core in months because of the work going through the shop didn't require them to do that. Well, I'd go over and have one machine that I would set up, one weld booth with flux core. And I would bring all of those guys in and they'd each make me about a two or three six inch long welds, you know, fillet welds or a little groove weld and run that process and I'd write it down, boom. They've used that process. I saw that they still have the skill set to utilize that process. I'm good to go. So I do all my stragglers at once. If there was people that didn't hadn't used a certain process or whatever, I just bring them all in and all right, you guys are going to use this process here and now. And you know, it takes usually an hour or two to get all those guys through, but then you're done. So that's my thoughts on continuity, how to keep a continuity log. You know, use an Excel spreadsheet and then, you know, I'm a big proponent of having a, you know, like a $3 notebook where I keep track of everything that goes on in the shop during the day. You know, okay, Fred was welding on this or this, just to, just to kind of refresh your memory, just in case something goes sideways. And especially with the continuity logs, you know, if you've got it written down in your little log book or your little journal diary, dear diary, today I saw this. You know, Fred was welding with these. So that's one. That's how I do it. It's kind of primitive, but it works. And you, it's a little, maybe a little more extra than having some kind of automated system. But I kind of old school in that regard. All right. What did we cover? Welder continuity, AWS D1.1 structural welding codes, period of effectiveness. We covered the ASME not Section 9 version thereof. Um, QW322.1, expiration of qualification. We talked about renewal of qualification and then continuity checklists and continuity logs. So these are some things that will get you in trouble, but if you do it like this, for the most part, you can stay out of trouble. All right, thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Um, GP out.